Are you curious to how I found Christ in my relationship and the beginning of my relationship and how we started here and we've grown to here with God and with the help of my family and love and support? Then this video is for you. I got married at 18 years old. I will probably do a video on the story of my husband and I, but right now I'm just going to be doing the story about Christ and how we found Christ and why we put him in our relationship. So this is my husband and I. His name is Ryan. We met in April of 2012 and we started dating in June of 2012. We were long distance. We lived an hour and a half away from each other. I met him while I lived in that town and then I moved about two months after meeting him. Which when you're young, an hour and a half, or even if you're not young, an hour and a half from a person that you want to spend all your time with is very hard. Our relationship was difficult in the beginning and for the bulk of it because you know we were an hour and a half apart and we both had jobs we had family obligations we had stuff keeping us apart that we had no control of and we saw each other about once a week eventually we got to the point where we saw each other and we saw each other once a week and when we saw each other it was for maybe six hours seven hours at the most so it's very difficult we talked every day texted every day but you still feel difficulties of a long distance relationship we weren't able to go out on dates all the time we weren't able to do stuff together all the time I could invite him over to do stuff it was very very complicated but we made it through and we got engaged of December 2013 we had been dating for a year and six months. We knew that we wanted to be together and we decided let's just do it. Let's do it. And then we got married in August 2014. So I got married at 18 years old and <laughs> I had just turned 18 actually. I got married on August 9th and I turned 18 on August 6th. So that was fun. And then now we have been married for almost three years. August coming up will have been our three years that we have been married. And this is us on our wedding day. It's pretty cute. So in the beginning, when we started dating, we were both Christian. We both believed in God. But we didn't have a strong relationship with God. We weren't very open about our relationship with God. We didn't really talk about it. You know, when we first met, I said, what's your religion? Because I wouldn't have ever dated someone who did not believe in God. But he said, you know, I, I believe in him. And I believed in him too. And I wasn't a hundred percent strong in my faith and I wasn't like yes this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life yes 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 and neither was he at the time we were on the same path and it, it worked for us you know if you're a young Christian and you want to date someone and they're not a Christian then obviously you're not on the same path but we were both Christian just weren't very sure of how strong our Christianity was inside of us so we started dating and like I said we were long distance and it was really difficult because of that but we didn't ever really we didn't ever turn to God for help in our relationship we never really thought about that I don't think it crossed our mind to do that we just kept strong in our feelings and we just kept going then we got engaged in December of 2013 sorry and I knew that I wanted to be with him and I loved him so much, but faith still really didn't play a part in my relationship. You know, when you're young and you're dating, you don't really, and even in the beginning of dating, you don't think about serious topics, or at least we really didn't. We weren't focusing on our faith and what our children's faith will be and everything like that. We were just in love and wanted to be together and had a lot of stuff between us so we couldn't be together like we wanted to be. Then in August, we got married of 2014. And that was going to be the first time that we were going to be together 24-7. That's when we started living together, and that's how everything changed. You know, that first year of marriage, so 2014 to 2015, was amazing. You know, we got to do all the things that we didn't get to do because we weren't together 24-7. We weren't dating in a town where we lived 5 minutes, 10 minutes apart. We finally were together, and that first year was so great. We were so happy. People always told me that it's going to be hard. You know, you're not going to like your first year. It's the hardest year. You're going to have so many things to come between you. And that first year was not the case. You know, we still hadn't turned to God at this point. We still really weren't strong in our faith. I have always, you know, prayed with my mom at night and prayed to myself, but we weren't strong in our faith as a couple together. So then 2016 comes around, it's our second year of marriage, and this is where we had the most difficult year. It was definitely the hardest year that we have endured. And 
we we finally we came to the conclusion that we needed God in our life so a lot of things happened that came between us and a lot of issues formed you know on my side on his side there was sort of a resentment towards each other at some point because we just weren't on the same path. We weren't connected on a lot of things. We didn't have so many things in common now that we've been together. Things have gotten stagnant. We had been together for like so long, but we had just started living together for a year, but I had talked to him every day since 2012. I mean, we've talked every single day, so I knew everything about him. He knew everything about me, and we were just getting stagnant. You know, there wasn't anything new for us to bond over. There wasn't anything to hold us together as a connection to one another. Even though we've been married, it's just, it didn't feel like it was enough. And then at the end of 2016, I remember I said, you know, I want to become more faithful. I want to reach out to God and I want help. And I honestly don't know what triggered that effect in me. I've always wanted to read the Bible. And if you watch my previous video, the three books that helped me find Christ in my heart, then you'll understand that I had a lot of issues trying to read the Bible at a younger age. I got overwhelmed. I got anxiety. I had a lot of issues understanding it. And I knew I wanted to read the Bible and I wanted help in finding my way to God. I don't know if it was just I felt kind of helpless at the time and I needed something to tether me back down to the world and to understand that, you know, I am in love and I'm so lucky to have him. And it was really it was really hard and me and him talked and he agreed that he wanted to also find God and we wanted to be a couple married with Christ in our hearts and put Christ before all else. And that was the first time that we'd ever really talked about a religion seriously and talked about God seriously. And it it was really heartwarming. And we noticed a change immediately. As soon as we started opening up our hearts more and started talking about it, we became closer and the problem started to fade away. And for Christmas, my mom got him a Bible, she got me a Bible, and she got me the 101 questions about God, the world, and the Bible this book, which this book helped me so much in finding God and finding my true self and finding everything I needed to know. So if you have any questions about God and the world and the Bible, and if you're curious, I recommend this book because it helped me so much. And she also got me this devotional book, which I mentioned before, which also helped me. I read it every night. Every night we had some form of language from the Bible, some form of just happiness emitting from somewhere else beside the relationship and it really helped us on the path to getting God in our life because I don't think that you can just one day boom get into the Bible and you read it and you love it and you understand it and you're happy it takes some gradual getting into my husband started reading the Bible before me he would read it every day and he would tell me about the things that he read from the Bible and it was really encouraging at this point I hadn't read the Bible yet I was still reading the other books that I had and I wasn't ready to take the plunge to the Bible and that wasn't actually until a few months ago that I did take that plunge so we are getting on the right path and 2016 the end of 2016 we finally understand how God works in our relationship and we understand why we need it. And today I'm going to talk about the, I'm going to talk about four main things that has changed in our relationship. So the first thing is it created a bond between the three of us. So my husband, myself, and God all have a bond together now. Before that, my husband and I didn't have, at the time, something to connect over. We didn't like the same things. And if we did like the same things, we wouldn't enjoy them at the same time. Like he liked video games and I liked music. He liked movies, I liked TV shows, but nothing ever seemed to work together. I wanted to get out and explore and see the world and do adventurous stuff, but I worked a very tiring job. I didn't have a lot of free time. I had a lot of issues going on in myself that I later worked out with just learning how to be happy and enjoying the time that you have without stressing about everything else and when we reached out to God and we started to bond over God together is when we found that we actually have a lot of things in common before I think our eyes were closed to a lot of the things that we had similar interest in because the feelings we had towards each other weren't always the happiest and don't get me wrong, we loved each other the whole time, but there was just a point where it was hard to be around each other because sometimes you're just so unhappy that it's a struggle to be with someone that you love because you can't figure out what's wrong. You can't fix what's going on in your relationship and you want to so desperately. So we reached out to God and by reaching out to God, I mean, we started 
praying, we started reading the Bible, or he started reading the Bible, I started reading books that involved God and helped me get my foot in the door to do that. We talked about God, we talked about our feelings, and in talking about God, it really opens up a a safe space to where you feel comfortable to start talking. You feel like a weight has been lifted off your chest, or at least we did, and it helps you so much. And it was awesome. You know, we finally had a bond again. We had something that we could have fun together again. We started laughing and enjoying the time we spent together rather than thinking the whole time about the things that we're not doing and thinking about the things that we should be doing and wishing our relationship had this different aspect or this different aspect. It really helped with that bond together. The second thing is it held us accountable and helped find our weak points. So although we had been married and we had made a vow to each other that, you know, we'd always do what's in the best interest for each other, a lot of times you can kind of fade away from that. And we did. You know, there were things that we were doing that were hurting each other that we didn't realize at the time or we did realize it, but we just wanted to keep on the path. You know, he didn't like that I would stay up late and... I wouldn't want to spend time with him. I'd want to go do something else. I want to go hang out with someone of my friends or my mom or something. And I wouldn't like that he was on his computer playing games all the time. And we would just do stuff intentionally to hurt each other even though we knew it was hurting the other person because we we just weren't happy. You know, we, we didn't care what was really going on and then we'd complain about it to one another and then we wouldn't fix the problem. We'd just keep doing it and say I'm sorry and then just keep on. And it wasn't like we were intentionally hurting each other on like trying to be manipulative. It just kind of happened. And with finding God, I feel like now when I think about something, I think, is this going to hurt my husband? If I throw away this pen, is it going to somehow hurt his feelings? And of course it wouldn't. But, you know, you have to think about things in a different perspective. And in finding God, we did. You know, we set time for, you know, him and I to be together. We set time for me to do my own thing and him for, to do his own thing too. Because we needed, we needed space. Even though you love someone, you still need your own space. You can't be with them 24-7 because you're going to go crazy. <laughs> so, you know, we worked out a schedule. We worked out how to deal with one another and how to grow together as a couple in Christ, but also to grow as a person individually because you have to grow. If you're not growing, then you're not doing what you're supposed to do in your life. You grow as a person and you change and it's okay. And in our relationship, we were just changing and we weren't changing together and that was what was hard. So, in finding Christ, it also helped us find our weak points. So, it helped us realize that communication was a problem. It helped us realize that spending time together was a problem. And that our hobbies together needed to be joined. And we needed to have common ground and a safe space to talk to each other without getting angry. So, that definitely helped us. And it definitely helped us find our weak points and be held accountable for any choices that we did make. It also created a foundation. So, when you get married, you become one. You know, you want to do everything that's better for the right person. You want to do everything to help each other and be strong and united front. And if you have any issues, how do you turn and find how to get back to the beginning? It was really difficult for us once we started getting married and once we got into our relationship to figure out how to deal with our problems and how to have a book that showed us what to do. We didn't have that. We didn't have anything that gave us any information and every relationship is different. So the foundation with Christ really is just something now for us to go back on. If we have any issues, we turn to the Bible. We turn to each other and we talk it out. We figure out what's going on and we figure out how to fix it. It's a foundation and just an even ground, a safe space for us to talk to each other and figure out what's going on. And so far, since we've established this, we have not had any issues. We haven't had an argument. We haven't had any problems since we have let God into our life. And I'm not saying that that completely fixes everything. A lot of things change about our life. A lot of different things happen. We change as people. But I feel like now with God in our life, it definitely helps us stay positive And it helps us get through any hard times we have as we turn to Him and our relationship turns to Him as well. And then the last thing is it helped determine the lifestyle we wish to live. So we were talking about having kids and we were talking about how when we were raised and how we were growing up, we were in church and we read the Bible and we had, you know, God all around us. And I wanted my kids to have God around them too. I wanted them to be able to know that there's someone above and someone who loves them very much and wants the best for them. And that you can pray to him and talk to him and feel better. And I realized the life that we were living at the time, like how would we 
introduce God into our child's lives? How would we say God is here when we don't practice what we preach? And we decided together as a couple that we needed to make a start and change the way we were living our lives. Not that we were doing anything crazy, but we just weren't putting God above all else. And God is supposed to be above all else. So we changed a lot of the things that we were doing and we put God in place of the most, like God is the most important thing in our relationship now. That was kind of hard to say, sorry. But now when we have kids, I'm not worried about God being introduced. I know he will be introduced because he is in both Ryan and I's life every day. We read the Bible, we read devotionals, we talk about Christ. We just are positive and I'm excited to share the love of God with my children. And beforehand, I would have been scared because I would have been like, I don't practice this. I don't preach. I can't preach to my children about God when I don't do the same to me. You know, I don't reach out to God. I don't do this to God. So I want my children to know that I do it and my husband does it. And it makes it easier to show someone whenever you are a believer and you know that it works. So, yes. This is a really hard video to film. Talking openly about Christ sometimes is very difficult. I don't ever want to push my religion on anybody and I don't ever want anyone to look at my story and be like, you're crazy or what are you talking about? You know, this is a very personal subject and sharing this, which I want to do and I hope it helps someone out there. Like I hope someone who is struggling knows that it's okay to struggle. Mine and Ryan's relationship is better than it has ever been, and it's because of God. It's because of Christ, and it's because we changed the way we were thinking. We changed our hearts, and we opened each other up to each other and to God, and we asked for forgiveness, and we have never been better, and it's not that we were ever really bad. We never argued. We never screamed. We just had a very big block between us, and now the block is gone, and we're just so happy, and it's just so amazing. To have someone that you love and who also loves God. And it's just, it's been such a helpful experience. And in my family's been there through the whole thing. A lot of people didn't know that we had struggles because we didn't share it. You know, on the outside, anyone looks normal. Anyone looks like they're in love and they're fine. But once you get inside and once you see their life, you can see that there are a lot of struggles that are going on. And with God, it really, really has helped us. Another thing that I did in the beginning of this journey is I made a journal. I made this journal for my husband and for I to look back on. And this is basically just an entry, a free space, a talking divider between like me and God, me and my husband, and how I get my thoughts out a lot. A lot of times I write and it makes me feel better and I draw. And I wrote a lot to my husband in here. And I like, told him the struggles I've been having and I told him everything and he he reads it and he understands it and it helps us talk to each other but also helps me figure out what I'm thinking and I also do like little things that I want to do I write down in here what I've done for the month what I did and I wrote down the things that I want to change in my life for how I want our marriage to go and how I want it to just stay steady and stay strong I also put a lot of Bible quotes in here, a lot of Bible verses. I wrote all kinds of pros and cons to the decisions I was making. I let this be my brain. So I wrote everything that I'm thinking in here and then I turned off my brain and I think with my heart, I think with my soul, and then I come back to this and I feel much better. I feel like writing helps me get a lot of my emotions out and it helps me understand a lot because I can overthink things easily. I can overthink and have anxiety and freak out and I'm just a big turmoil like rat. <laughs> and I realize that I can't do that and it's not helpful to anyone in my life, especially not me. So if you are a young couple and you want to have Christ in your life or if you're an older couple and you want to have Christ in your life, Today is a perfect day to start, and I don't recommend starting with the Bible. I don't recommend starting headfirst into everything and being like, yes, Genesis, I'm going to read you. I got it. We're going to do it. I recommend starting out slow. Start evaluating your lifestyle. Evaluate the things that you do and the choices you do and think, is this for the best? Am I doing what I can to be the best wife, to be the best girlfriend, the best spouse, the best boyfriend? Am I doing what is good for God? Is what I'm doing hurting God? Am I hurting his heart by making these choices? You know, Am I doing something that affects the people in my life negatively, that affects myself negatively? And you have to find these choices. And once you find them, you have to think about yourself. Think about, am I the best person that I want to be? Is this the best version of myself? Do I need to change things about me? If 
I saw myself on the street, would I want to be their friend? Would I want to have them in my life? Think about the words you speak. If you're constantly cussing and saying negative things, like think about the words that you say if they were on your body. I saw that post the other day. Like if the words you said were on your body, would you be pretty? Would you be pretty if you kept cussing and saying negative things and how you don't like so-and-so and how you don't want to do so-and-so? Would you look pretty if you had that on your body? Like you have to think about the things and the choices that you make. It's not a stressful, it's not a stressful process. You have to ease into it with your own time. And you have to realize at your own time that you want to change and that you need to change and that you are excited for what's coming next. And that was a really hard that was a hard time trying to figure out how you need to change and why you need to change and when to change. And a lot of times you're like, I love me. I don't need to change. What are you talking about? But and whenever you're by yourself and you start thinking, you say, do I really like who I am? Am I okay with the person that I am going to be if I stay on this path? And that's just kind of how you have to decide it. And this is kind of a mumble video and I hope that this helps someone. I hope someone watches to the end of this video because it's 20 minutes long and it's ridiculous. But God has helped me and he has saved my marriage and I'm so thankful every day that I made the first step and that my family supported me and that my husband was there for me and that I could understand my life. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm sorry it was really long but I encourage you to reach out to God and to write your feelings down and to just evaluate your life. See if you just are happy and if you're not happy, make changes because you can make changes. That's the one thing that's awesome about life is you can change it. You have the power to do whatever you want. So do it. Bye.